All right, hey guys, welcome again to Fire Alarms and Such, and today we're going to be doing a testing an overview of my Notifier Coded Pulse Station with General Alarm and my Edwards 323D 10AW 10 inch single stroke red bell. So you see, I have this old, uh, this little system set up here. It is in the old wall test spot, which is why the wall looks like it does, along with my old heat bell and that old smoke detector I have. We got the bell, coded pulse station, and then the hole where the power comes out of. So a lot of you may be thinking, what the heck is a coded pulse station? The coded pulse station works by having its own address. It's kind of like an adjustable system, but really basic and old. This pulse station itself is from uh, December of 1964. So it is a very old pulse station. I was very lucky to find a Notifier branded one and in such wonderful condition that everything still works. So coded pulse station, you see it has this little number plate on front that says 243. That is its address. And the way it works is you pull it and it winds down a spring and then the lever snaps right back up and then that spring winds a little gear and that gear has little notches in it of two, four, three. So then in somewhere like a central station or at a fire department, you, there'd be a bell like this or some sort of audio appliance and you'd hear it pulse out one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and you'd say two, four, three. Then you look at your big sheet of numbers and see, okay, two, four, three, that is fire alarm and such testing area. And you'd know that's where you'd have to send the fire department instead of calling 911 and saying there's a fire at so-and-so. You would just pull this and it would sound the alarm for this pull station. So you will open it up. It just takes a hex key. So you can see it is a rather large pull station. I had to cut a big hole in the wall. And this is what the whole winding mechanism looks like. So here you can see the original inspection tag from December 14th of 1964. And this is the whole timekeeping apparatus. Down there is the general alarm switch, which is, uh, it just got bent inside. I have to fix that, so we're not gonna test it today. But all it does is instead of pulsing out like da 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 da, it's a general alarm switch, so it would just make the bell run continuous. And the reason I'm not like, ooh, I need to fix it, because this is a single stroke bell, and if you apply continuous power, it will just ding once. So it really, in my setting, doesn't really serve a purpose. And then you have down here your official underwriter laboratory certification and your box serial number. So the way that this time uh, this time box works as you can see the gear here you have two four and three so this is the gear that actually uh, pulses out the box and then this is the switch that runs the power so I'll pull this once with it closed and pull it once while it's open so you can see everything activating so then we just close it up and then some other little overview on the front this is the actual pull down handle this is a tab that you unscrew if you want to put in a brake glass rod. Right here, this is the testing and silencer port. So if you want to just do a ping test, you turn it, turn it counterclockwise, and it rings the bell. And then if you are to turn clockwise while the station is running, it will not sound the bell. So you can do a silent test and then it's kind of sensitive, and then this is the general alarm switch that just takes like a uh, duct detector key, you can see. So there really is nothing else to do but pull it. So it, when you pull it down all the way, you can feel four ticks as it goes down, and then it will code out four times. So let's pull it. All right, so it has done its four tones and alerts that there is a fire in this area. So if we go ahead and open it up, I can give you a little bit of a more detailed 
explanation of the mechanism inside. So if we open it up here, it comes down on a little support struts. Like I said right here, this is the switch that controls the actual coating of the pull station. Right here, this little T-bar thing going across, this is the governor. It uh, lets only one tooth at a time rocking back and forth so the whole spring doesn't just uncoil really fast. And there you can kind of see that uh, like copper looking coil. That is the coil spring that you can see kind of moving as that winds up. Over here, this is that test and silent switch. And then this is a top part. So if you're working on it, you can work on it without having to go under. And then again, that is the general alarm switch. And then in there is just a couple different sized cogs to transfer the energy around. And then a ratcheting, uh, ratcheting gear there so the lever can wind it and then go back to normal. So we will go ahead and pull it. We will run all four again. So I have my hand on the lever and I will pull it to wind. And you can see everything begins inside to move. It's clicking and then I'll release and it'll start going. So you can see it is right here where the contacts close. And you can see now it has run its full cycle all four times. So you can see this little gray thing would rock back and forth really quickly and that is allowing that, I'm trying to see if you can see it, it is allowing that gear that it's resting on to go one tooth at a time to regulate how fast the spring discharges and how fast it pulses because if it wasn't here it would just go and it would be done because it would have no the spring would just unwind pretty much immediately so this little governor allows it to slow down and not really a whole lot else to show inside so we can close it up do 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 And we can run it once using the uh, silence feature. So we'll just pull it down two ticks to let it code twice. And see if you turn it this way, then that allows you to make sure everything is working without sending a alert to the central station. So as long as you hold your uh, hex key in here, it won't chime, but if you release it, it will. But if you turn it, it won't, and it will let it run silently. And all that is in here is just that switch right here, and it just separates the contacts. This is a very old, very mechanical kind of pull station. These are a lot bigger in person that you, than you would think. Um, where's a pull station I have? Let me get... Here is a... Chevron next to it, if that gives any indication of how big it is. Let me close it up. Like, this is a Faraday Chevron. That's, you know, it's quite a bit, quite a bit bigger. It's about, like, it's as wide as the Chevron is long. If that gives you any sort of indication. The center part is probably about as big as the chevron. So you can see it is quite large. That was something I was not expecting. Save it the 10 inch bell. 10 inches sounds really short, um, but it is quite big. And the way it works is, uh, you might not be able to see it. I don't want to take the whole bell off. There's a little, there's just a little hammer that every time power is applied, it powers a magnet inside and that repels the hammer, the striker up and it sets up until power is taken away, which is why it's single stroke, because every time power is applied, it just goes up and stays up, hitting the bell. So, that has been a testing and demonstration of my new Notifier coated pole station. So, thank you guys for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.